God bless you. I'm Dr. Maria Seaman. We just finished the sermon, your report card of belief. At the end of the day, it won't be what your mother believed, your father, your grandmother. It will be what you believe. You have to answer for yourself. Enjoy this clip. God bless. When you hear the gospel message, do you join with me and allow it to become a part of the paragraph of your life and hence a part of your life story? Or when you hear the word of God, do you just reject it? Uh, listen, one day God will present to you your report card. Uh -huh. uh, your report card of belief. It will have your own name on this report. Uh, more than your name, it will have your unique DNA fingerprint attached to it. Uh -huh. There will be no mistakes. It will be your report card. Will God graduate you to the next level called glory? Or will you be held back to experience the torment of hell? I know we've gotten so modern, we just want people to think you're living hell on earth. Well, you may be living a type of hell on earth, but I promise you, as long as you can still clap your hands, laugh at a joke, party with your friends, you ain't getting hell. No, 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 no. The enemy wants to fool you into kind of discarding away, uh, getting rid of the fact that heaven is real and hell is real, that life exists in opposites. We just want to believe heaven is real, but uh, and no, nobody wants to believe hell is real. But uh, to tell you the truth, a part of the encouragement of myself to, to remain on the straight and narrow, can I put it out there, is the fact that I really don't like pain and I, I, I really don't feel like burning. I, I really don't feel like uh, being rejected by Jesus. You know, I, I've been uh, many times at the bed of someone who is transitioning from this earth. And, 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 you know, why is it that we wait when we're nearly at the end of life in order to say, Jesus, I love you. I want you in my life. I, I, I've decided, like many of you, that I will make Jesus my choice now. Uh, see, some people, some people... Some people think that they're, watch this, they're living hell on earth. I, I got some news for you. Just because I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior, I'm experiencing a little bit of heaven on earth. Do I have anybody out there that says, I'm glad that I made Jesus my choice. I'm, I'm glad that I decided to follow Jesus, that I go with him. I go with him all the way. One day the judgment day is coming. In this text, Jesus encourages us to make a choice today to believe and not to wait until it's too late. Let's look at it, the topic in the text, as we deal with the following three points. Number one, eyewitness. Number two, eyes blind. Number three, eyes open. Uh -huh. Oh, trust me, one day every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. One day everybody's eyes will be open whether they want their eyes open or not. But I'm trying to help somebody today that if you miss the judgment day, if you miss the rapture, meaning you're not caught up, that means your eyes will be open, but the results will be what they are. And so today we as pastors and ministers, saints of God, encourage the people, make your choice while you have a choice. Let me deal with the point number one, eyewitness. As Jesus walked the face of the earth, he in fact became a demonstration of who he was. That is, Jesus performed signs and wonders. Jesus healed the sick, raised the dead, made blind eyes to see, lame legs to walk, dumb tongues to talk. Jesus manifested healing and miracles wherever he went. In other words, as Jesus lived, all who came into contact with him immediately became a witness of the power and purpose of Jesus. Uh, for you see, Jesus did not come only to heal the people, uh, but his primary reason was to save the people out of their sins. See, a lot of people don't mind calling on the church when somebody's sick, when somebody needs to walk. Okay, can I go there today? Oh, 
yeah. We don't mind the church when we need our loved one raised up from the bed of affliction. We don't mind the church when we need our children to be prayed for. But when you talk about save you from your sins, sh don't say nothing. Quiet down. Shut up. You be the church and stay in your little corner. But ain't it something that your prayers don't, they can't stay in the corner? The greatest work Jesus came to do was to save people from out of their sins. This was the greatest miracle. You see, church, it is one thing to be given your sight. It is totally another thing to be given eternal life. Uh-huh. It is one thing to be made to walk again. It is entirely another thing to be changed so that one day you will walk the streets of glory. It is one thing for a tongue to be loosened. It is entirely another thing to be able to know that you will worship Jesus with the angels in glory singing hallelujah to the Lamb of God. As Jesus lived on the earth, he lived purposely in order to persuade mankind to accept the greatest gift ever given. That is the gift of eternal life. Here's the thing. The people back in his day had the very same challenge as the people of today. Mm -hmm. you, you see, people don't mind being healed by Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, no. People don't mind church praying. The greater thing is for the prayed for to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Uh, yeah, people will always accept prayers, accept you stopping by their homes or in the hospital and praying. However, once they are back up on their feet, how many use their feet to walk into the house of God and give God their life and praise God for the rest of their days? Not the majority. This can be well, really no surprise, for Jesus did many miracles in his day, and the people still denied him and rent their way. Remember the ten lepers? Healed all ten of those guys. How many came back? Yeah, there you go. So you got a percentage of ten percent. Out of 100%, 10% will come back and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done. I'll forever give you praise. The rest of them say, snappity, cappity, clap. I'm on my way. Forget you. Got my miracle on my way and just went on their merry way and forgot Jesus. But I'll never forget. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget it. How you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget it. How you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. If you want this sermon in its entirety, Email me at swimatlogic.bm. We'll be sure to get the CD or DVD to you. Blessings abound.